Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So today I'm having a day trip to Port Coquitlam. So Port Coquitlam is a suburban city east of Vancouver. Okay, and here we are at the park. It's called Colony Farms Regional Park. And there are multiple trails here at the park. And today we're taking the easiest and the shortest route along a creek. And we're walking over a bridge. And the Coquitlam River is right underneath. And after walking to the other side of the bridge and sitting on a bench, I look at the view in front of me, it's really mystical, and I, I decided to sketch it in my art journal. Okay, so I am starting to draw this blue mountain in the distance, and now the hill below. Just sketching very loosely, adding these tree and grass textures for the hill in the foreground, and then the bottom of the hill and adding more very simple loose broken lines to suggest the texture of trees and grass on a hill and keep drawing the baseline of the hill very loosely because there are a lot of grass covering the base and now I am drawing a couple of trees on the other side of the bank so when drawing trees and other organic things, my hand is very relaxed and I'm lifting it up a lot to create these broken lines to show loose natural organic forms. And add some ripples on the surface of the river. Some more texture for the hill. and darken the base of the hill a bit, just so it stands better. Okay, so now I decided to sketch the bushes in the foreground, very close to my feet, because I really want to show a stronger sense of distance. As you can see, these grasses have more details compared to the ones on the back. We can see clearly pretty much every single blade in more detail. And I'm drawing very quickly, kind of summarizing what I see instead of copying every single blade of grass that's there, which is not possible. I'm trying to capture the spirit of these grass, waving in the wind, using abstract lines. So I'm only using reality as a reference to express my feelings about nature, about everyday life. Okay, so the painting part is gonna be in real time. So when painting watercolors, it's a good idea to wet the area first with clear water so the color can spread out fast and easily. So when painting a landscape, I always like to paint the sky first. So I just wetted the area first with clear water by squeezing my water brush. This is a kind of like a travel paintbrush with water in the handle. So now I am putting on a very light wash of lemon yellow to show the sunshine on the clouds. and put on some cerulean blue for the top part of the sky. Also blending on some ultramarine blue. So I am observing, sensing what I see. I'm moving my brush pretty slowly to interact with what, what I see and how I feel inside. using different pressures, trying to suggest the boundaries between the sky and the clouds. 
This process is very abstract, but I really enjoy it. And the colors are very much diluted by water because I want to keep the sky nice, free-flowing, and translucent. Just pressing very carefully. Sometimes we don't need to use very dark tones for the sky. And now I am trying to relax and focus on my interaction with what I observe and how I feel instead of stressing on accuracy. Because the clouds are always moving, so it's not really possible to capture their absolute placement. So now I'm gonna let the, uh, the sky dry a bit. I wanna paint the hills first. Very dim green mixed in with a little bit um, medium yellow. So I am really trusting the process by following my observations and how I feel about the colors and forms that I see and translating what I see and what I feel into abstract art techniques like brush strokes and use of colors. So there are a lot of analysis here in this process and a lot of decision making and every artist have different thinking and decision-making processes. So as you can see, I'm doing wet-on-wet -wet blending, a darker green tone by mix of varying green and brown or burnt sienna, and just let the blooming go. It's very natural and organic instead of over-stirring the areas. And now I'm painting the lower hill here, kind of wetting the area first a bit with water So there are a lot of nice golden colors on this hill. So now I'm just putting on orange and orange yellow. It's a really nice contrasting color with the uh, turquoise mountain color above. Warm and cold colors together, making the picture stronger. And another kind of um, brown green for the bottom by mixing orange into the leftover green I got this color. So I am seeing, sensing, and mixing on the palette area to get the color that I felt. We can see so many more colors with a human eye compared to a snapshot. And now I am putting on some dark brown for the bottom of the hill. That's the shade area that I observe for the grass. And a bit of shade colors here and there, wet on wet. And I'm just letting the colors blend together by themselves. I really like this soft, fuzzy effect of blending. And just add on some red oranges here and there as I observe. So instead of getting caught up into the details, I'm only focusing on my color impressions of what I see instead of um, putting too much stress on getting the details right. The colors in this landscape is the most important. And now I'm wetting the river area before adding colors. So when painting water, I always um, add the lightest color that I observe, usually the uh, reflections on the surface. So you, as you can see, I'm using the leftover colors of yellow, yellow-orange and red-orange. The colors of the trees reflecting onto the surface of the river is really important to um, convince the viewer that this is water is reflective reflecting its surroundings. 
and now I am grabbing some ultramarine blue and just lay it down over the areas that I see so I'm not stressing about the gaps between the grass and the foreground just lay it on there because this ultramarine blue is very translucent the grass color is going to be denser it's going to cover up these blues so just keep painting very loosely and using thin brush strokes here and there to suggest the ripples on water nice and gentle okay and adding some more reflective colors for the river around the bank on the other side okay as you can see i switched to a thinner water brush this is my sakura water brush it has a medium tip it's great for finer details so i'm adding another layer of reflective colors to give more depth for the water okay so just grab some leftover orange and punch on these little loose leafy colors for the trees in the distance I think these trees have even more details compared to the hills on the left hand side so it's kind of like um, a point of interest for the viewer so in a landscape sketch it's pretty important to have an object it doesn't have to be very big that has a um, sharper definition compared to the other things okay and also i grabbed some medium yellow mixed with the leftover orange to paint the grass in the very foreground close to my feet because the details or the definitions of these grass are already defined by my pen work so I don't need to um, paint in super detail I only want to focus on the colors and I'm okay with painting in really large chunky brush strokes and now I am blending on some radiant green mixed with um, yellow for the bottom of the grass the bottom of these grass are still green so I guess this is my style of sketching I get most of these definitions of the things that I see with pen line work and then I just focus on the colors with paint and painting loosely is a nice way to relax and to capture the essence of colors in a landscape and keep adding another layer of darker tone of green by mixing in burnt sienna or brown into varying green again wet on wet and just let the little blooming go by, this, by itself so while I was painting the grass in the foreground the hills the part of the hills was dried up a little bit so now I am adding another layer of fresh orange on top using my thin sakura water brush to add these smaller brush strokes orange and red orange here and there just to make the hill look stronger and adding a bit more dark brown shade for the bottom of this hill and adding another layer of darker tone of green for the hill behind it's good to, to do it as the layer is almost dried so this layer of paint can stay strong instead of getting dissolved with the layer when it's way too wet I'm going to preserve the sky just like that I'm not going to add any more colors for the sky I want to keep it 
as translucent as that. I really like the blooming between the top of the hill and the sky. So I didn't uh, plan that blooming to happen on top of the hill into the sky, but it, it looks really magical this way. So I'm not going to touch it to fix it anymore. Okay, so this bottom hill is dried up a little bit more now. So I'm adding another layer of brown, red brown. There's so many colors to see in that hill. There's so many kinds of trees and plants growing on there. So again, when adding this new layer, it's a good idea to wait for the previous layer to dry a bit. So while waiting, I was painting the other parts of this sketch. So it saves time. And adding a bit more final retouches for the grass in the foreground. Some yellow green here and there for the little blades. Okay, and I think I'm going to add a few more ripples with this leftover blue, blue-green, especially for the uh, foreground part of the river. Just make the ripples a bit sharper. Ultramarine blue. And again, I was doing this when the previous layer of the river was dried. So the ripple shapes can stay nice and sharp. And it's done. This sketch took me about 23 minutes from drawing to painting. So when painting on location, especially in this weather, right now it's in late autumn, it's very chilly. So I had to work as fast as I could. So working fast is not about rushing. So it took me um, almost 10 years to sketch almost every day to be able to work faster. And it's time to go home. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you very soon next time. Have a great weekend.